morning, uh, morning everyone. So nice to see you all here today. Um, it's a bit warmer today, isn't it? Yeah. Nice that it's not quite so freezing cold. Um, anyone have any nice news to share with us uh, this morning? It's my day off. Hooray! Hey. <laughs> Steve off, hooray! <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it was happy, happy chaos on the. Um, um, it was, yeah, it was a really nice time. It was, um, it Yeah, no, it was good. Um, be before we get going, there's one thing which I just wanted to, um, to share with you, which is. Um, you know, thinking about the new restrictions that have been in place since last week, in particular when it comes to masks. So, um, let me just read a couple of Bible verses. This is Hebrews 2, 15, uh, 14 and 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too, Jesus, shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. It's Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. And then Jesus says in uh, John chapter 6, uh, Jesus says, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Uh, this is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. So what I wanted to say was, up until the 19th of July, uh, what I was doing was um, I was uh, wearing a mask to take the bread and the wine round. In my conscience, I can't do that anymore. And I wanted to tell you that this is it's the living bread that came down from heaven that we might eat and not die. And I just thought, you know, what, what we do, the way we do things proclaims a message. And I thought, what message is it sending out? Um, so I, I just can't participate anymore in my own conscience. And I'm sorry if that's, if that's troubling for you. If you prefer not to receive communion from me, then just let me know. But I'm going to come around and do just as we did last week. Yeah. Um, and that is, that's my, my own conscience. Um, so, you know, um, I'm happy to chat about that later if you would like to. Um, but um, for me, I think this, that's, that's a step too far. Mm. And each one of us has to, has to go with our conscience, don't we? Yes. Before yes. God. But I'm, if you do, Cathy, that's your decision, and it's not, I'm not going to judge. Would it offend anybody? No, no, it's silly, Cathy. Because I believe that we've got Jesus on our side, and I'd like to take that. That's all right. Yeah, it does get a bit much steam out of the ground. So let's begin with a psalm. This is um, a psalm today, Psalm 140. And that's page 629 of the, uh, of the New Bibles, page 629. Shall we say this together? Rescue me, Lord, from evil doers. Protect me from the violent, who devise evil plans in their hearts, and stir up war every day. They make their tongues as sharp as serpents. The poison of the violence is on their lips. Keep me safe, Lord, from the hands of the wicked. 
Protect me from the violent, who devise ways to trip my feet. The arrogant have hidden a snare for me. They have spread out the cords of their net and have set traps for me along my path. I say to the Lord, You are my God. Hear, Lord, my cry for mercy. Sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer, you shield my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the wicked their desires, Lord. Do not let their plans succeed. Those who surround me proudly rear their heads. May the mischief of their lips engulf them. May burning coals fall on them. May they be thrown into the fire, into the miry pits, never to rise. May slanderers not be established in the land. May disaster hunt down the violent. I know that the Lord secures justice for the poor and upholds the cause of the needy. Surely the righteous will praise your name and the upright will live in your presence. Amen. That's one of the things I like about the Psalms, it's that the boomerang effect of evil. I think I um, often think about it with Tia. He did a, a, a devotional book on the Psalms and he talks about the boomerang effect of evil and how you know evil recoils upon us. And uh, I think it's something to remember, isn't it, that in times when we see evil flourishing, it seems like that we know it's not going to, to prosper and it's not going to win in the end. That you know God is not mocked. And uh, and that's that's really important to remember, isn't it? At all times. Well, let's uh, let's praise praise God in the words of our first hymn. This is number four hundred and sixty-six. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Number uh, four six six. It's not really Adventy. Um, but, um, you know, it's praising, isn't it, which is appropriate all year round. So number 466, praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Let's stand and sing. <clears throat>
he turns and spares us. Well, our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes, as we were reading in Psalm 140. Do please be seated. take up your service sheets, we'll pray together the prayer of preparation, asking God to, to cleanse our hearts, to perfectly love him and magnify to praise him. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name, and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I was um, doing a, um, a, a little video yesterday about um, uh, doing a little series on you know, what, what I've been doing on the return of Christ, and anyway, I, as part of that, I just included um, part of the Queen's speech on her coronation day. Um, and um, it, she was talking about, you know, how um, uh, people were praying for her, and she was talking about, you know, being, before God, being, you know, worthy of your trust, and so on. And I just thought, what an amazing, what a gift it is, what a blessing it's been that we've had, you know, the Queen, who's had such a clear faith for these last, you know, um, about 60, 60, 70 years, um, you know, to reign over us. And uh, I just think, you know, to have godly rulers is such a, a blessing, actually. And I think God has answered that prayer, hasn't he? And um, so, uh, but we need to keep on praying, obviously. Uh, that was just a thought. Anyway, we're going to have our reading now, and uh, Steph's going to bring us our reading from Luke chapter 30. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. All the eighteen who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll deground it and fertilise it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll come 
to look at that passage in just a moment if you want to keep a finger in it. But uh, let's say the creed together before we do. Back in our service sheets. So we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He is into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, we're back in uh, Luke chapter 13, page 1046, if you want to, uh, to turn to it. So why is it that tragedies happen? Why is it that tragedies happen? Now this is something which uh, we often ask, isn't it? You know, why do, why do bad things happen to good people and, and so on? You now we often see that, that kind of thing happening and people sometimes have this idea that, that bad things happen because people deserve it. Um, and um, you know that uh, if something bad happens to you, or if something bad happens to someone you know, it's because you must have done something to deserve that bad thing happening. Um, and this was a common view in the time of the Bible, as we will see, as Jesus talks about. But actually what Jesus does is he refocuses attention and he says it's actually not about, um, uh, not about deserving, but actually it's what they say to us. That's the thing, you know, we need, to, we need to look and say, well, what does that say to us? And so this is what we're going to be looking at. And this is, um, we've been looking at this series here of three um, parables which sort of talk about the, his return and what it means to be, to be ready and to be waiting. And so that's what, that's sort of the context of, uh, of what Jesus is saying. Um, so he, he talks about um, starts talking about this, or, or people ask him, sorry, about the Galileans, this is the first one, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. So we don't know what, uh, what event that this was referring to. Um, it could be, I was reading something which gave about six different possibilities, we don't really know. Um, but uh, it, presumably there are people who were going up to the temple um, and uh, they were going to offer sacrifices and uh, they've been killed on their way as Pilate mixed their blood with their sacrifices. Um, and um, you know, they were presumably um, faithful Jewish people at the time um, and maybe people have been saying, well, they must have done something really bad uh, to deserve that. And Jesus said in verse 2, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. So people had this idea, don't they, of, of um, karma, 
you have, you've heard people talk about that before, you know, the idea that in this world we get what's coming to us. You know, if you do good, then you get good. If you do bad, you get bad. And uh, so that they were, must have been saying, you know, these Galileans who this terrible thing happened to, um, they must have done something really bad. They must have sinned really badly in order for that to happen to them. But Jesus says, no, that's not how it works. He says, um, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. So Jesus just takes the focus away from whatever, from their worthiness or not. And he says, actually, it's not about that. He says, this is a message for you. This is how you should respond. He says, you need to, to look at yourself. And again, he says the same thing um, about um, this tower. He says the tower in Siloam, 18 died and the tower in Siloam fell on them. So you might think almost like maybe a natural disaster, you know, something natural rather than a, an evil thing, just a natural thing which happened. And he says again, uh, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. It's not, it wasn't because they deserved it that it happened. But he says, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. So what he's, he's saying is that when bad things happen, it's not necessarily a punishment. And the world tends to think that, doesn't it? I mean, if, if something terrible happens, people will think, oh, what did they do to, to deserve it? You know, all this karma idea. Now, sometimes the Bible does talk in those terms. So, for example, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, it says um, about people taking communion in an unworthy manner. And it says in chapter 11, verse 30, that's why many among you are weak and ill, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Um, so he says that, um, you know, that illness was a result of their not taking communion in a, in a worthy manner. So that was, um, that was related. But generally speaking, Jesus says that's not, that's not the right conclusion to draw. That when bad things happen, it's not necessarily a punishment for sin. But that it's meant to be a warning sign. That's the point that Jesus said. It's not, it's a sign for us. And it's a reminder of our own mortality. It's a reminder that we ourselves uh, will die one day. Jesus says, you know, you will all likewise perish. You know, that, that dying is, is the goal of all of us, is the destination of all of us one day. Whether we die when a tower falls on us or in tragic circumstances or of old age, whatever it may be, that is our goal. And that when we see these events happening, it should remind us of that. And then um, he, he gives this little short parable of the fig tree. Now a fig tree was often a um, sort of metaphor for the people of Israel. So you may remember in that Mark, Mark's Gospel, Jesus, uh, uh, Mark chapter 11, Jesus curses the fig tree. So this is Mark 11, verses 12 to 14. Uh, the next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Um, so this is... Uh, you know, if you like, a metaphor for the people of, of Israel of the day, saying, well, you haven't received Jesus, you know, you haven't borne fruit, you don't know God. And that's, that's like what Jesus is saying here. It's related. Uh, he says that the, the, the owner of the, the, the vineyard went to look to see if there was fruit on the fig tree, and there was none. And then um, he says, well, cut it up, you know, get rid of it, because it's just using up the soil. I don't know if any of you are gardeners, if any of you have fig trees or anything like that, um, but um, you know that uh, uh, trees do use up the, the nutrients, don't they, in the soil? And um, uh, that's, that's the thing, you know, you get rid of ones which aren't bearing fruit. But the man says, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll fertilise it and dig it, and then if it bears fruit, then great. 
but if not, then cut it down. Uh, so what, what Jesus is drawing attention to is the time factor. He's saying that this tree is living on borrowed time. This tree is, uh, has only got a year left. Does the tree know that? But that's the thing, that that's what Jesus is saying, that it's, it's living on borrowed time. That the point is the urgency, the need to act now, otherwise there will be destruction coming. And that, I think the message of that is quite clear related to what he's saying. It's the urgency of the need to act now. When we see these things happening, that's a warning to us to act. So, now I think really this is um, quite a straightforward passage, actually. I think that this is, the message of it is pretty clear. Let's just go and, and, and recap. I think sometimes, sometimes the Bible says that when bad things happen, they do happen as a consequence of sin, as we saw in 1 Corinthians. But generally speaking, I think it's not the right way to, to, to draw a line between those two things, especially not in an individual's life. You know, to, to say that that's definitely happening because they did that. Um, I think there is a general pattern in the Bible that when we disobey God, then bad consequences follow. And certainly as a nation, I think a lot of what's come upon us has happened because we turned away from God. But I think to look at individuals and to say, well, that event happened because they did that sin, I don't think that's, you know, unless you have a very clear um, word from the Lord about that, I don't think that's the right, uh, that's the right thing. I would say it's best not to speculate. But the, the real point that Jesus is saying here is that tragedy, wherever it comes, is due to the curse of sin and due to the curse of, of the fall. That these things happen in the world because of sin at the end of the day, because there is sin in the world. And death is, you know, the, the, the curse of the fall, isn't it? Death is the curse of sin. And that's something which is going to befall all of us, whether we die in, in tragic circumstances or not, that we will all one day die. And when these tragedies happen, it is a sign to us of, of our own mortality. It should be. We should be looking at that and thinking, well, you know, if someone gets run over by a bus, you can think, well, that could be me tomorrow. You know, are we ready to face it? That's the question that we need to be asking ourselves. This is what it says in uh, the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 9. Hebrews 9, verse 27. Just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. People are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. That's the message, isn't it? That we're all destined to die once, and then face judgment. And when we look at uh, tragedies happen, it's a, it's a challenge to us to say, have you responded to the message of good news before it's too late? Have you listened? to what Jesus had to say. Have you accepted that message? Do you know um, the, uh, the National Lottery, when it first came in back in the 90s, do you remember they did those adverts with the start with the hand and it could be you? Do you remember that? It could be you. Well, I think when tragedies happen, we might to see that. That's, that's, what God, that's a message from God to us. It could be you. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to meet me? Is it's a reminder that we're all living on borrowed time. And that actually we need to, there is an urgency about our situation. We need to make things right with God before it is too late. Because one day it will be. So are you ready to meet the Lord? And, you know, this is the, the Advent message really, isn't it? You know, that we're not just looking back to the incarnation of Christ. We're not just looking back to when he was born. And it's all very cute, isn't it? You know, we look at the the manger, we look at the stable scene and the Christmas card sort of image and we think, oh how lovely, you know, Jesus, oh, there's a cute little baby. But we remember that Jesus will one day return again as judge, as we say in, in the creed, he'll return to judge the living and the dead. And that, you know, we need to be ready for that. And that each day that passes is an opportunity to make ourselves ready and to, to grow in faith, to grow in our trust in him and to put our trust in him. 
just like to finish by, um, by reading you a short little extract from a John Newton's testimony. And John Newton, um, you, may, you may know, he was the, um, well, he wrote Amazing Grace, but he was a, a slave trader and he, he spent his early life on ships. And I think he, his mother was a Christian and she taught him you know, to pray and, and so on, but um, she died when he was quite young. And uh, so he grew up without really having any, without believing in God, really. But then one day, um, when he was on the seas, um, there was a terrible storm at sea. And um, let me read you what happened. This took place on the 10th of March, 1748. That 10th of March, says Newton, is a day much to be remembered by me, and I have never allowed it to pass unnoticed since the year 1748. For on that day the Lord came from on high and delivered me out of deep waters. The storm was terrific. When the ship went plunging down into the trough of the sea, few on board expected her to come up again. The hulk was rapidly filling with water. As Newton hurried to his place at the pumps, he said to the captain, If this will not do, the Lord have mercy upon us. His own words startled him. Mercy, he said to himself in astonishment. Mercy, mercy, what mercy can there be for me? This was the first desire I had breathed for mercy for many years. About six in the evening, the hold was free from water, and then came a gleam of hope. I thought I saw the hand of God displayed in our favour. I began to pray. I could not utter the prayer of faith. I could not draw near to a reconciled God and call him Father. My prayer for mercy was like the cry of the ravens, which yet the law does not disdain to hear. It's not an amazing story. This tragic event um, in Newton's life, or near tragedy, actually turned him to the Lord and uh, made him call upon him. And yet God did not disdain to hear even then. And that's, that's the mercy of God, isn't it? That whenever we call out to him, even if it seems like it's our final moments, then God is there and God will hear us. And that's the, the question that we need to, to reflect on, I think, as uh, we come up towards Christmas time. And let's take a moment to pray and ask God uh, for his help in, in these things. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for this passage from Luke's Gospel. Thank you for these words of Jesus and pray that you would help us to take them on board. And we pray that you would help us to recognise the urgency of the hour and to, uh, to seek you, and to, to seek your mercy in Jesus Christ. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that, that you would help us as a church to be able to hold out this message um, to those who are in desperate need and who do not realise the danger that they are in. And we pray, Lord, that for this um, for our parish, for this town, across our land, across our world, that, Lord, that this message uh, would be heard loud and clear, and that many would turn to you, and especially we pray at this Christmas time, that people would seek you and seek your mercy. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to um, continue in prayer now, and I'm going to invite Mary up to come and uh, to pray for us this morning. Thank you, Mary. trust in him. For God sent his one and only son who gave his life for us all. And I myself am looking forward to that day when I am called home and I come face to face with my Saviour, my Redeemer and the blessed Messiah to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, just thank you for this morning and every member of my church family being here. And we pray for those are not Lord, we just pray that all is well with them. Thank you God that take, those that take part in every service, just bless them Lord and thank you Lord for giving the talents that you have given them. Thank you God for always being there 
At times we may doubt it, but you are there. At times things go so smoothly, and at other times it's just like being in a terrible storm, but you bring us through. We pray, Lord, for this, our country, Great Britain, and we pray for all the nations throughout the world. We pray especially for their people, especially for the poor, Lord, those that do not have much. Lord, when we come into this world, we come in with nothing, and when we go out, we go out with nothing. For all that we need is you when we come home to paradise. But Lord, some people are so greedy, and there is so much wickedness going on in this world, Lord, it breaks my heart. But Lord, your holy love abides deep within our hearts, and Lord, also your perfect peace within our souls. Thank you, Lord, wherever we may go, you are always with us, 24-7. Thank you, Lord, that when you called our names, we heard and turned to you. For myself, Lord, I've loved and believed in you since I was a little girl. Thanks for you calling me and for the love of my mum of you. God, as Christmas draws near, we will be celebrating your birth. Many will be celebrating in other ways. But us, the children of God, celebrate your birth. I pray for safe journeys for those who will be travelling. I pray for all those, Lord, that will be helping in any way at Christmas. And I thank you, Lord, for the NHS and all the other services and all the volunteers, Lord, that have helped through this vaccine time. Just thank you, God, for your love, your guidance and your protection. And I just pray for our own families and our friends and neighbours for their love and kindness to us all. Amen. appreciate it when, when you pray for us because um, you know your prayers are always very thankful and I think that's something which you know it's often even easy to overlook isn't it easy to forget um, you know but thankfulness is important actually and gratitude and uh, I think it's you know, it's good to, to, to thank God for all of the blessings that not take anything for granted well we're going to sing before we come to the Lord's table and the, the hymn is number one two three nine one, two, three, nine, from the squalor of a borrowed stable. And actually, I don't, think I've, I don't think I've reminded you again this year, so just a reminder that Jesus wasn't born in a stable, in the, in the traditional Christmas card sense. But he was, I suppose, actually, I, I, someone said something quite helpful the other day. It was, he said, it was a house which was, had a stable in it. That's how they used to be. You know, the animals would sleep, would be in one part of the house in those days um, but um, I'll, I'll forgive Stuart Town in that because the rest of the hymn is, is good 1239 from the squalor of a borrowed stable why don't we uh, stand and sing together
sinners from the claims of hell and I think it just helps me to picture that that moment you know that as Jesus was on the cross fighting for his breath then he was fighting for you and me and um, it just makes it makes it more personal doesn't it makes it real I think I just like that image I'll let do take up with service sheets and uh, we'll join in uh, with the confession in the, in a moment's time Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the Scriptures. Let us, therefore, examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Let us give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his Son, Jesus Christ, and as we remember Christ's death for us and receive this pledge of his love, let us resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. You then, who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from this day forward in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, Judge of all people, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and the wickedness we have committed time after time, by thought, word, and deed, against your divine majesty. We have provoked your righteous anger and your indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are deeply sorry for these our wrongdoings. The memory of them weighs us down. The burden of them is too great for us to bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that from this time forward we may always serve and please you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to Him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to Him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says, this saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here what St John says, If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Pray together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great blessings. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always in our mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and be in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue, a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he is betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let's pray the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Pray together on the back of our service sheets the prayer after communion. Lord and Heavenly Father, we offer you through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merit and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. Fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
by you and with you and in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Just uh, before we come to our final hymn, just one or two notices. Um, so next week we're going to have our well, it says midweek carol service, um, uh, which um, I don't think it should be Wednesday worshippers carol service, really. But there we go. I suppose for people who don't come to Wednesday worshippers, I don't really know it's Wednesday worshippers today. Um, and um, yeah, so that will be it's sort of like a first Wednesday, but it will be a carol service. So um, there are some of these little leaflets on the back table, the blue or blue back table. Blue table at the back over there by the radiator. So do pick that one up if you know someone who'd like to come. Uh, maybe invite your friends and neighbours. Um, something else which I'd just like to draw to your attention. Next year, we're running an, a new course and it's called Hope Explored. And I've got some little flyers for it. This will be on a Monday evening here, just in the little in the little room there, um, from the 10th of January. But um, I, I did the, um, looked at the first session of the Hope Explore. It's only three sessions, so it's only short. But I did the first, um, the first session, I looked at it, um, and it's really good. So this would be a good one maybe to invite someone to. Just, I think hope is what people are looking for at the moment really, isn't it? And um, I think, you know, that this, yeah, this course is actually a really good, a good way of exploring that. So um, I'm hoping to bring one or two people um, so there we go. Um, there are some flyers for that on the back table as well. Um, anything else to mention? It's, it's the Nativity Carol, or the St Mark's Carol service this morning. Uh, this morning. This Sunday. 10.30 on Sunday. So that's also, there are some little illegals for that too. Um, any birthdays? Wednesday Russia's birthdays this week? I don't think so. I don't remember. No, I don't think there are. Okay. Well, okay, all right then. Well, is that everything? That's everything, isn't it? Okay. Uh, Thursdays together and each meal. Oh, it's just a Christmas meal tomorrow. That's right, yes. Something wrong with the end of the meal. Yeah, you put them on the table. If you've got some spare ones, leave them on the table. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Right. Christmas cards. Okay, well, that final hymn then is number 520. <coughs> number 520, Tell Out My Soul. And I thought that this was, um, well, it's Christmassy, isn't it? It's the, it's the Magnificat, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Number 520. Let's uh, stand and sing our closing hymn together.
greatness of the Lord all our days. And don't, uh, don't forget, we'll have some tea and coffee after the service. I do please stay uh, for a cup of tea or coffee. And as we've been finishing with the last few weeks, these uh, words right from the end of the Bible, from the end of the book of Revelation. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.